Hey everybody, Ed Homewood, Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel. Hope everyone's doing well today. Today I thought I'd do a quick system update. There's been a lot of changes uh, in the media room. One is these big bad boys here. My Wharfdale Diamond 12.4 is there, the new reference speaker. Uh, they are displacing the ELAC Debut 2.0 F62s, which I still have. And of course behind them are the big energies. Right now I'm in the midst of reviewing the Monitor Audio Silver 100s and I'm doing so with the Orchard Audio Star Crimson Ultra DMC 2.5 amp and the Orchard Audio Pecan Pie Plus Premier Streamer. And obviously I'm using those for the Monitor Audios and you can see my AXR 100 is back from a friend of mine and I, he enjoyed it and I'm glad to have that back. So let's look in the rack and see what's changed. Well, first thing that's changed is the Evo 150 is now a permanent part of the collection. Uh, <laughs> very fortunate to be able to, to make a deal and retain that. So very, very happy about that. The shit Bifrost still the same. Loki is still the same. This is a neat little piece. It's a little remote control infrared line level switcher I use. And then of course my PC that runs Artivana. I have the Eversolo DMP A6 with the upgraded power supply in, and I've done a review on that already. Of course, my Fluence RT84 turntable with the uh, Audio-Technica AT540ML cartridge, my classic Harman Kardon CD transport five-disc carousel, and of course my Cambridge Audio MXN10, and the neat little DAC that the review will be coming out shortly, sometime in August. Nice little ESS DAC, but with swappable op amps. So anyway, that's the changes in the system as it stands right now. And I thought you guys might be interested in it. Well, as you can see, we made some nice changes in the equipment in the rack. And I wanted to go through each piece with you uh, just so you knew why I did what I did and the reasonings behind it to kind of give you a better insight into my evaluation process and my review process. And hopefully that insight will let you kind of understand what I'm doing better. And hopefully you'll like what I'm doing and I would very much appreciate it if you gave me a, a like and a subscribe for this video. Anyway, so... The AXR100 from Cambridge Audio is was my daily driver for years, and I truly love that piece of gear. I think it punches way above its weight. It's a 100 watt a channel, class AB, nice built-in DAC, great features, plenty of power, loads of dynamics, um, just an awesome piece. And it's going to stay in the collection forever, but it is perfect for me to review price-appropriate gear. So price-appropriate speakers, price-appropriate DACs, whatever other kinds of equipment, so that I'm not doing it on something really expensive or really high end and it kind of skews the review, if you don't understand what I mean. So again, it's, it's going to give me that nice sub $1,000 amp. And I don't think you could buy a better amp even for a thousand bucks. Um, but it gives me that, that ability to review more price appropriate gear and keep it very real. And that's kind of the goal behind it. Now, the Evo 150, if you guys remember my review of that, I had handed my wife the tablet with the Stream Magic software on it and she got into it. She was playing with it. Literally within a couple of minutes, she had it all figured out and was finding her. You know, I said, go find what's your artist? What's the album? What's the track? And boom, 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 she found it because the Stream Magic software is great to use. And then she asked the question, can we keep it? And I thought, oh my goodness, at 3,000 bucks, can we keep it? I mean, we, you know, we weren't really thinking about allocating the money with it for that, but the opportunity came to keep the unit and we kept the unit. It is magnificent and it's a very prized possession now in our rack. So the Evo 150 gives me a, a really high quality, class D, mod, very modern amplifier, class D, high quality DAC, um, balanced ins, a pre out a great moving magnet, a high output moving coil phono cartridge, the ability to run two pairs of speakers, um, obviously USB in, uh, SPDIF, coax, all of those goes into and goes out as, uh, everything I would need, sub out, everything I would need for, you know, a real high end audio file piece of gear that I can now evaluate expensive gear on. And that was kind of the goal behind it is, now I can go, you know, a, couple levels above the AXR 100 in sound quality and, and resolution and everything else. So that again, I can do obviously better reviews and tease out details on that more expensive gear a lot easier. So that is there for good. Um, down below that, the shit Bifrost, my hot rotted Bifrost. I don't know that that'll ever leave my collection. I really love that piece. I've had it for years. Um, I understand the sound of it really well. And now obviously at some point, I think, you get used to the sound of things, but because I know it so well, when I plug something else into it, 
I can tease out those fine details. So when I plug in a Weem unit, I plug in the Eversolo DMPA6, I can hear those differences because I know the baseline for that deck and then whatever I'm hearing above or below or whatever, I know that that's the piece of equipment I'm listening to and I can really kind of tease out those fine details. So having the Bifrost and having that my reference and it's a great deck to begin with because I am a multi-bit R to R kind of guy anyway. So that's perfect to have. Now, the shit Locius. The cool thing about the Locius is, and I don't do much EQ, honestly. It's very subtle, whatever I do. A little cut at 2K, a little bit of uh, uh, boost maybe at 16K, depending on the speaker. Um, just to add a little something. And it's never more than a dB or a half a dB anyway. But what's nice about the Locius is all my single-ended gear goes through that little infrared switcher you saw next to it out to the Locius and from the Locius out single-ended to the Evo 150. But the Locius also has balanced ins and outs. So I can come in on balanced, go through the Locius if I need to do an EQ. And if I take it out of the line, it has no negative effect on the sound anyway. But then I can go balanced out to the balanced ins on the Evo 150. And that gives me a better perspective. So like when I did the review of the Eversolo DMPA6, I did, I hooked it up single-ended just to give it a listen for about an hour or so, but I did all of my reviewing for whatever the week and a half that I was doing it, all on balance, just because I wanted to give it the best possible chance. And I fed it signals from my PC, I fed it signals from my CD player, obviously. I fed it signals from an outboard streamer just to kind of compare the streamer and compare it as a DAC alone, because it's a neat piece in that it's a streamer DAC, but it also can take digital inputs and act as a standalone DAC. So I wanted to test it in all the different conceivable ways that I could, and I did do that. And having the balanced in and out on the Locius gives me that ability. Plus, if I come in single-ended, the Locius will take it out balanced. Now, it doesn't convert it from single-ended to balanced. It converts it from 2 volts to 4 volts. So that's a nice thing. A little less line noise or, or potential for line noise. Anyway, so then the uh, next level down where you saw the DMPA6, that's not staying in the system. That's not mine. That actually belongs to James Robert, who, of course, is our ABX audiophile. So I'm going to be shipping that back to James uh, in a day or so. Um, but next to that is my little PC. And that spot where the DMPA6 is a great spot to stick other stuff. I've got balance connectors back there. I've got IC power connector. I've got figure eight power connector. I've got single-ended. I've got USB. I've got coax. I've got uh, TOS link. I've got everything back there so I can plug other stuff in. But the little PC next to it is a really key component to everything I do because it allows me to run Artivana. And I love Artivana. Many of you guys are going, Artivana, what are you talking about? I did some videos on Artivana. Nobody watched them. Unfortunately, nobody watched them. But I love it. It is a bit perfect streaming scheme that bypasses all of the nonsense in your PC or Mac mini or Mac. And it just gets the signal out of the PC without any of the Windows crap messing with it, any of the, the PC manufacturers crap messing with it, and it comes out, and I, I can go right to the kernel and I can stream it at very, very high resolution and get bit perfect out of it. And so it sounds amazing. Plus, Artivana has a neat feature called UPnP, or Universal Plug and Play, which means that if I didn't want to connect a wire to the, my Evo 150, I can go out of the PC wireless UPnP into the, Art of, into the Evo 150 from Artivana and get bit perfect wireless kind of as a streamer going to the amp and i love that and i use the upnp a bunch uh, in a, a number of the reviews so down below that and I'll, I'll talk about it in a second but down below that my turntable hasn't changed fluence rt84 with an audio technica at 540 ml cartridge which i dearly love i think it at the 300 price point i bought it with the head shell already mounted on the head shell so it was perfectly aligned and everything that thing sounds amazing, but I was able to get a hold of a very rare AT125LC cartridge from the 80s. Now, LC stands for line contact, and I do believe, and if I'm wrong, I'll put it down here. I think line contact may still be uh, Audio Technica's best needle uh, configuration. So, the current lineup of VM cartridges, those replacement stylus will fit my AT125. But I still have the original stylus and it's still in the microscope, looks good. I hope I don't have to replace it because the replacement cartridge is over, uh, replacement stylus is over 500 bucks. So fingers crossed, but it sounds wonderful. Anyway, the Phono, uh, it, the Fluence is plugged into the uh, Phono preamp in the Evo 150 and it sounds great. Um, so I've taken my little shit Manny and I've handed it off to my future son in law. So he's playing with that right now. 
So that simplified things by just keeping it, you know, just turntable right into the Evo. Below that is my old Harman five disc CD carousel uh, player. I take a coax out and I can run it into anything I want to any of my DACs, the Evo 150, any visiting DACs, whatever. And then I can take the analogs out and I can run them into anything I want to as well. So I have kind of a combination of just CD transport or old school Burr Brown dual 20 bit uh, R to R DAC chips in that player. So it sounds marvelous. <coughs> Below that, you saw the Cambridge MXN 10 uh, streamer DAC. Now that has been a real boon, real helpful piece to have. I used it as a source for all my vintage gear reviews. So when you saw me review the Big Pioneer, you saw me review the Accuphase, you saw me review the Harman Kardon, you saw me review the old Marantz Class A integrated. The MXN 10 was my source for all of that. Good DAC, great streaming platform. I, you, I can't tell you enough or praise the Stream Magic platform enough. It is by far and away the best streaming platform I've heard. Take that for what it, what it's worth. It's way better than anything Wim's got. It's I thought it was better than the Ever Solo. Um, I you know the Orchard Audio uh, Pecan Pie is a great unit, and the Pecan Pie is a great streaming module. The the the, the kind of the the you know, the handicap there is Volumio. And Volumio works good and it sounds good. And that piece sounds amazing because it is just a phenomenal DAC. But there is a bit of a, Volumio is just a little bit of a, you know, holding it back just a smidge. But the MXN10 and, and the Stream Magic module in that, which is Stream Magic 3, and the Evo 150, which has the Stream Magic 4 module in it, man, they are, they rival, they get really, really, really close to what Artivana sounds like to me. And so that's high praise for those things. So anyway, the MXN 10 is great for visiting gear as a source rather than rewiring CD players and all that other stuff. It's just easier to do that. I can control everything from my easy chair. It's got built-in volume if I need to use it just as a preamp. So that was that. Now, speakers. The ELAC debut F62s, they're in just another part of the room because I needed more space in here. They're not going away. When I bought them, I knew I was getting kind of a budget speaker, but it was a it performed, it punched above its weight for sure. And with the modifications I made on it, lining it with no res, packing it with more material, rewiring it with good quality wire inside instead of PVC jacketed stuff, uh, getting rid of the push-on connectors and soldering everything, they sounded very, very good. And they did their job well. But I needed to do something a bit different. So the ELAC DBR62s is now my reference bookshelf speaker because I needed something small. I needed something also price appropriate at whatever they are, 600 and something bucks for the pair, they punch above their weight too. They sound really good. That's one of Andrew Jones' best designs for sure. So now when I have something in that's not super expensive, um, and they'll scale up for sure. You ought to hear them on the Evo. They sound amazing. You should ought to hear them on the Orchard Audio Amp. They sounded amazing. Um, but it, again, it gives me something that is a little better baseline price-wise than something really expensive. So the DBR62s are here. My big energies are still here. They'll always be here. Um, that is a touchstone for me. That speaker is a, can be a microscope into the music oftentimes, uh, but it does have some limitations and it's also 30 something years old. The Wharfdale Diamond 12.4s. I am the most fortunate guy in the world. Um, I was able to get those and I was, it was an offer I could not say no to. They are just absolutely amazing. Um, I've been running them in and listening to them and holy cow, do they sound amazing. You don't need a subwoofer for these things. They make really good bass, very tight, very articulate. And when you team them up with a good, powerful amplifier like that, Orchard Audio Star Crimson Amp, oh my God, did they dance. Um, the Evo 150, oh my goodness. Did they, they throw a soundstage on both the Orchard Audio and the Evo 150 that's just, it's bigger than my room. It's just amazing. Depth, height, center image, just absolutely razor, this laser beam shot, uh, spot on. Awesome sounding speaker. And for the money, I'm not sure there's a better speaker, honestly. They will scale up and I will com I will compare them to speakers maybe up to twice their price. They're that good. And you know me, I love Wharfdale. So there is maybe maybe some bias in there just because I'm a Wharfdale fanboy, uh, but I really love those things. They're great. And obviously when I walked in, the Monitor Audio Silver 100s were on the stands and I'm in the process of reviewing those. And by the way, those are owned by Kevin Mole at Skylabs in Des Moines, Iowa. That's an amazing speaker. Oh my goodness. For a bookshelf, I mean, they're not inexpensive at around, I think the new version, 1700 1800 bucks for the pair. 
They sound so good. They can't, they, I put them on the Orchard Audio and they vanished. They just vanished. The, I couldn't, I could close my eyes and listen and I couldn't point, I couldn't have pointed to a speaker. I mean, I knew where they were, but I honestly couldn't have pointed to where the speaker was located based on the soundstage I was hearing. It was that big and that deep and that well-defined and articulate. What an amazing speaker. And the good news is the Monitor Audio Silver C Series has been around for a while. And I've looked and there are a few on uh, eBay used and things like that. So you keep looking for something that's really interesting. They're amazing. Now, they can be just a smidge bright and that's metal dome tweeter kind of thing. So on the Evo 150, they were great. I went in and I tweaked it a little bit with the Locius, just a smidge. Uh, but on the AXR 100, smooth as silk, amazing, massive soundstage. On the Orchard Audio Star Crimson amp, just amazing soundstage. Like I said, they vanish. So the Monitor Audios, that's a great one. I've got some other stuff coming in, nothing I can really talk about right now, um, but there's some be some fun and interesting stuff coming in soon. Um, obviously, there's a bunch of videos that I'm sitting on that I've already edited, that they're you know ready to upload and, and release to you guys. Um, and this will be one of them, and I'll probably do that um, you know within a couple of days of me shooting this. Anyway, that's the system update. Um, hopefully now you'll get a little bit of an insight into, you know, my met, uh, uh, methodology of how I go about reviewing um, the equipment I'm using, the, the benchmarks that I have so that I can then try to tease out the details in this equipment so you guys get a better idea of what it's going to sound like or how it's going to perform for you. Um, so if you have any questions about any of the gear, have any questions about how I hook it up, have any questions about anything, whatever, ask away. Anybody who's commented knows I read the comments and I answer the comments <coughs> and I appreciate the comments. I love that back and forth that we have and that communication we have. And that kind of, it's starting to kind of develop into a sense of camaraderie, which really makes me proud and really makes me humble as well. I mean, I get a lot of positive feedback from you guys. You better watch out. I'm going to get a big head, but no, really. It's humbling and it's entertaining for me and fun. And I hope you guys get something out of it. And if you do, I would greatly appreciate your subscription. My subscriber count's growing very nicely, but the more subscribers I have, the more credibility I have with the manufacturer. So when I go to ask them for gear, they're much more likely to give it to me because they know I've got a good size audience. And also manufacturers will come to me. And that's really an important thing. Um, I don't know that you'll have seen it by then, but I had a Chinese manufacturer reach out with, to me with a DAC they're introducing um, and to review. And the interesting thing about it is it's an $80 DAC with swappable op amps. And I did some op amp swapping. You'll see in the video when I release it, if you haven't already seen it. Anyway, thanks so very much. I appreciate all your time. Oh, in the description, Amazon affiliate links, you know the drill on those. Um, my playlists are down there. I've been asking people to send playlists and I did get a bunch of them. They kind of got misdirected to a different file in YouTube studio. I finally found them and released them. And I responded back to everybody, even though some of the Playlists were sent to me a couple months ago. I feel bad about that. But go to go to my main page where you see the Moran Amp, and it says videos and shorts or whatever. And there's a community tab. Click on that, and you'll see a poll where I asked you what your famous favorite. Excuse me, fa I get talking so fast. Famous stream, favorite streaming service was. But you'll see a playlist in there, and in big capital letters, it says please. Uh, tap on the read more, and then all of those it'll expand and show you the playlist. There's probably a dozen or so in there right now. So now I'm going to probably not drink any more coffee for today because I'm talking a mile a minute. Um, but that's that. Thank you so very much for all your time. Thank you so very much for putting up with my silliness. I am so grateful for this. Um, I am having so much fun. I hope I'm giving you some joy as well. And thank you, thank you, thank you. That's it. I can't think of anything else. This is Ed Homewood, Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel, saying now it's time for you to go listen to music on your system. And then put in the comments what it is and tell me about it and tell me what you like about it. Thanks so very much.